Aya, it's me again. And today, I'm gonna to show you how to play something pretty cool. It's a guitar riff by Robert Plant. Well, it's not by Robert Plant, is it? Unless he's a super secret axe slinger, a serial riff writer, and he's been giving the credit away to the likes of Jimmy Page and Doug Boyle, I think, on this occasion. But I doubt it, because he's lovely plenty, but he's not stupid. The guitar riff we're gonna be looking at is from Ship of Fools, specifically that hypnotic, cascading 80s guitar riff that just goes round and round in the intro. I don't know what it is about that riff, but when I first heard it, it just grabbed me. I'm a huge fan of that kind of playing. Um, I don't know, some things just resonate and make you feel a certain way. And again, that album in general, it's called Now and Zen, it speaks to me. Maybe it was the year it was released. Don't know why. It was a long time ago. Anyway, it's in the key of E minor, or G. Oi! Well, I've lasted that. Sorry, it was making ridiculous noises. So the song is in the key of E minor, and yes, we're gonna learn the introduction as is, but because it's such a vibey, hypnotic track, as I mentioned, it makes for a really cool jam track as well. I think when um, you go online and you kind of search for jam tracks that have been made as jam tracks, they're, they're cool, but when you remove maybe some vocals or some guitar parts, some lead lines, using a certain software you might now know about. Um, because more, I don't know, more, um, more creative opinions have gone into crafting that as a song. When you take away some of the, the lead lines, I feel like they're much more enjoyable to, to play over and improvise. That's what I think anyway. And as we know, what I say is correct at all times, okay? So here's a couple of positions of E natural minor or E aeolian that you may or may not know. And uh, if you want some extra help, grab the tab on my Patreon. I always put the extra curricular stuff at the bottom. <laughs> First little part. So it's a repetitive picking pattern with two shapes. The first one is the 12th fret of the G and the B, i.e. your second and third fingers. And then you can slide back a fret and put your index on the 10 on the B. Major third to minor third. Picking pattern is gonna be G, E, B, G. And I go down, up, up, down. A little bit quicker with no gap. Now, when you first come in, the very, very, very first time, you're actually gonna rest a semiquaver and come in slightly off beat. So the count would be like this, three, four, one. But as that riff, hypnotically cycles around, um, you actually change all the other repeats and you do come in on the beat. So the other times, it's gonna go like this. 
very slight change to the first picking pattern. So same shapes, except we're going to hit strings B, G, E, B. And then the second one's the same. So first time, three, four, one. Second time, three, four, one. It's good. It's why I like it. It's why you like it too. I knew it. Right, other parts. It's a very cool little descending riff there. A little bit fiddly. You might think this isn't fiddly, but it is fiddly, all right? Because I said so. Good. So what I like to do is pull off to the seventh fret of the B from the eighth fret, second to first finger. But I also like to do a mini bar to prep because it allows us to get to the G string seventh fret a little bit quicker rather than going and having to hop over, we can already have that there. Making your life easier. And then you're gonna grab the ninth fret of the D, pull that off to the seven. At that point, you've got time, because I've made time, to hop the index finger over. It allows you to keep it punchy as well, you know, it's supposed to be a little bit staccato. And then we've got this final riff to conclude. But you already know the end bit because we went through that. So jump up to the 12th fret of the high E. You're gonna hit it and then hit it again and pull off to the 10 index finger. Then grab 13 on the B with the pinky, hit that and pull off to 10th fret. Back up to the 13 with the pinky, and then you can form that shape um, that we played at the start, 12th fret of the G and B, and then do that second picking pattern. At that point, you are now free to just cycle that around. And when I first went through it, I cycled it around for a very long time. And I mean, a very long time. It's hypnotic. Believe me, I bet you, as soon as you get it down, you can even try over the backing track that I've provided on Patreon. See what I did there. But you can try that as many times as you want by yourself, but I can guarantee you, you won't play it any less than 70 times.
you done yet? Good, because this brew's empty, it's just a prop. It's like Hollywood in there. But, you know, playing that over and over again, it's warmed up my hands, good and proper. Got my dexterity back. I'm happy, and you should be too. Now, if you enjoyed this lesson, hit like, subscribe, bell next to it. Drop me a comment below. Let me know what your favorite Robert Plant guitar riff is. He didn't have to play it. We went through this on, on one of his solo albums, all right? Don't be smart. And uh, maybe I'll go through some planty stuff as well because we all love planty, don't we? Good. Um, yeah, do let me know in the comments what you thought of this lesson, what you think of me. It better be good. And also, um, yeah, your favorite planty tune. If you need some extra help, because you've lost the plot and you thought all those scales he was whizzing through, like Steve Vai on Acid, what's he playing at? I need the tab. Well, you can get that on my Patreon, can't you? And you can have a little chat with me over there in private. Keep it clean. And uh, yeah, I'll look forward to reading these. Try and sneak in another video before Christmas, but I'm off now anyway, downstairs to fill up me brew for real. And I'm gonna watch the final episode of Andor. If, you, if you're a Star Wars fan, right? And you're not watching Andor, shame on you. It is so good. Like Rogue One, I'm going off on a proper tangent here. Well, I didn't plan on this, but you can't shut me up as we know. Rogue One is one of the best things to happen to the Star Wars franchise in a while. Um, such a good film and uh, and or it's like, ah, oh, if you've not watched it, I don't want to talk too much about it, but it breaks all the rules of, of the normal series where like one thing happens and then all cliffhanger. It's like, there's been about three finales and it just keeps going. It's the gift that keeps on giving to the Star Wars fans of the world. So get it watched and then come back and thank me. All right, the camera's a long way away, but I'm gonna have a go. I'll catch you soon.